Happy Wednesday. How you doing? Hey, I want to talk to you today about how forgiveness led to a miracle heart healing. Forgiveness led to a miracle healing for a woman's heart. Glory to God. huh? This, we're talking about miracles. Everybody wants to hear about miracles. How many of you know this is absolutely in Melbourne, Florida, is a miracle ministry. It's sitting right here. Most of these people around here have no idea that this is here. Most of the people around the country have no idea that this is here. Somebody told me when a woman's blind eyes were open a few years ago, uh, this evangelist said to me, if that had happened 20 years ago, it would have started a revival. Glory to God. There's a miracle ministry going on. A place where people can get miracles. This has been going on in our ministry for 30, over 30 years. Just one, literally one miracle after another. Healing miracles, financial miracles, all kinds of miracles. We are literally in the miracle business. We get them over the phone. Some of you people watching this video oh, have experienced miracles. Healing miracles or seen them in your friends. Some of you that have referred people to me have seen miracles. Some of you have experienced financial miracles. Some of you uh, people out there have found wonderful husbands. That's a miracle. It's a miracle to find the perfect mate. Glory to God. God does every kind of miracle you can think of. And we are in that business. Miracles always have to happen through a person. Now, you can get a miracle three different ways. You can get it through your faith, if you have that kind of faith. If you don't, you can use the faith of somebody else. That's when people call me, they're using my faith to get a miracle. And they get miracles. Or you can demand a miracle from God. And if you demand it long enough, hard enough, and loud enough, you will eventually get your miracle. We've had that happen too. So there's three ways to get a miracle. Call me. If you need a miracle, or if you know somebody who does, say, call Pastor Jim. He can get your miracle for you. Do it right over the phone. Glory to God. I mean, we do it all the time. Hallelujah, huh? Glory to God. And then watch your words. Watch your words. Glory to God, huh? I'm going to make a note of that. How to keep your miracle. We'll talk about that too, but not right now. Today, I want to talk to you about this lady who got a miracle for her heart. Say this with me today. The rest of my life is the best of my life. The best of my life is the rest of my life. Everything I touch turns to gold. I am smart and getting smarter every day. I am extremely talented. Everything always works out for me. I am beautiful. I am beautiful. I'm getting better looking every day, actually. And so are you. We have beautiful partners. Amen. Glory to God. I am a wonderful person. Pastor Jim is a wonderful pastor. Actually, I've got the certificates to prove it. I am the best preacher in the whole country. Nobody is preaching on this level. That's a fact. And what makes me the best, really, and sets me apart, because there's other people who can do what I do, but they're not available to you. I am available. You can call me. Go to my website, increasenow.com. My phone number is right there. Right there. All the people in my church, they come to the house. The people in this area, they just stop at the house. Say, they call it, Pastor Jim, I'm in the driveway. Can you come out and pray for the kids? I do that. Glory to God. I'm always ready to pray for somebody. That's what I do. Amen. I'm always ready to talk to somebody on the, on the phone. When somebody calls me, 
They happened to be the most important person in the world to me at that time. Glory to God. So share this ministry with everybody you know. Amen. Tell them to call. Hey, and make sure you call when you do your offerings and donations because I want to speak the word for word blessing over you. Glory to God. This woman uh, came to our church and great people. And one day in church, I was teaching on forgiveness. Jesus said that when you stand and pray, forgive other people. If you have ought against anybody, you have to forgive them. How many of you know we're not called to trust people? You don't have to trust people. A lady said to me one time, you know, a couple of years ago, she says, she says, you don't, she was trying to get some things out of our church that I wouldn't let her have a foothold in our church. She's trying to draw people out of our church. And she said to me, she said, you don't trust anybody, do you? I said, no. I said, I'm not called to trust people. You don't have to trust people. Verify. You, I mean, you get a contractor, call, verify that contractor. You hire somebody to clean your house, verify that they're on the up and up. Even if they got a fish on the back of their car, that doesn't necessarily mean they're dependable. Amen. You're not called to trust people. You're called to love people and you're called to forgive people, not to trust them. Amen. So, I talked about forgiveness this day on a Sunday. I talked about the fact that, that there is a root of bitterness. The Bible tells us uh, in Hebrews in chapter 12, I believe, that at least a root of bitterness spring up. There is a root growing inside people that are full of unforgiveness and bitterness. There's a root down there. And it's generally caused by something that happened maybe even in their childhood that causes unforgiveness. And then they get to the point where they can't forgive anybody. That happened to me. I went through that. I had a root of bitterness and a root of unforgiveness in me for years. And it just ate away at my insides. It's like taking poison and waiting for other people to die. I was waiting for all these people to die that had done me wrong and, and had, had stolen from me and everything. But I got rid of that root. I dug it out. And I forgave the person that had caused that root. It happened to be my dad, my father. And it's like when I did that, I just had this heart of forgiveness. And no matter what anybody has ever done to me since then, I don't hold it against anybody. Amen. I just go about my business. I bless them. And I said, the way to get rid of that root is to dig it out and go back. Sometimes you have to do that in your childhood and forgive those people. Glory to God. Well, this lady came to the back of the church after the service and gave me a hug. And she says to me, she said, I am 78 years old. I have had a root of bitterness all my life. She said, I'm going to go home and deal with this. I said, God bless you. Out the door she went. Well, I didn't see her for two weeks. They were busy, her and her husband. Wonderful people. Well, Two weeks later, she stands up in church and she says, I dealt with that unforgiveness in my life, that root of bitterness. She said, I it went away. I am totally free, she says. Everybody clapped. Well, a year later, her husband called me. And he says, can you come to the hospital? He said, she's in the hospital. She's dying. I said, what's the matter? He says, it's her heart. I said, I'll be right there. And we just lived 10 minutes from the hospital. I mean, I was there in 10 minutes. I mean, I 
got dressed up and I'm running right over there. I walked into the intensive care unit. There she is in bed. And he says, the doctor says she just has a couple hours to live. I looked down at her. I said, what do you want? She said, I want to live. I want to live. I put my hand over top of her chest. I said, about a foot above her. I, my hand was about a foot above that woman. And I went like this and I said, in the name of Jesus, I command a new heart to be in that chest. I said, okay. You're all set. Out the door I went. That was Thursday morning. Sunday morning, I looked out the window and they were in the parking lot. And she got out of the car and briskly walked into the building. I said, what happened to you? She said, I felt better. She said, hour after you left, she said, I was out of bed. <clears throat> she said, the doctors come running in there. Said, you got to get back in bed. I said, I'm not getting back in bed. I'm healed. They kept her there all day long running tests on her heart. Finally, that evening, this whole team of doctors around her said to her, your heart is perfect. Somebody get her clothes. They got her clothes and she got dressed and went home. Perfectly healed. And we lost track of them. They were still there for two or three years. And then they moved back up north to be with their children. And heard from them for a while. And then I haven't heard from them for a few years. But glory to God, it was forgiveness that opened the door to her miracle. If you're having trouble receiving a miracle, there may be a root of bitterness or unforgiveness in your life somewhere. That's the biggest blocker. That's a, that's a miracle blocker, is that unforgiveness. That forgiveness led to that woman's miracle. Now, let me tell you, and she got it. She got her miracle. Glory to God. We're going to talk about more of these miracles. This, we're just talking, we're talking about, everybody wants to hear about miracles. This is a miracle ministry. It's one of the very few miracle ministries still left in the country. I mean, 20, 30, 40 years ago, there was miracle ministries. You could find them. There's still a few around, but not very many. And very few people you can get a hold of or find or get to to get a miracle. But you can get a miracle from me. Glory to God. Hallelujah. I'm going to talk to you about miracles. Glory to God, huh? Was that good today? Share this video with everybody you know. Please. Nobody is teaching on this level. Nobody is operating on this level, folks. They can literally get a miracle for you. One of these days, I'll be gone. Long time probably. But one of these days, this ministry will be over and we will be gone. And people will say, you know what? That was a miracle ministry. It is a miracle ministry. Get a hold of it while you still can. Amen. Hook up with it. Stay hooked up with it. Because like yesterday, I talked about the guy who got four miracles. He stayed hooked up with us. He knew where to find me to get his miracles. He knew who to call. You need somebody to call. People always tell me, they say, oh, Pastor Jim, I just appreciate so much that you're available and you're there for us. I'm always there for you. I love God's people. I have a love in my heart for God's people. I want you saved, healed, and delivered from poverty. And I will use the power in the name of Jesus to make it happen.